This one is probably the Kittle I'm most excited about, I will say. She's a keeper. All right, welcome back everyone. Today's project, we have a wonderful array of 1960s Kittles. Uh, again, these guys were made by Mattel. So we are gonna be cleaning up some of them. I recently got quite a few. Uh, I will note this one is from my own personal collection. Uh, I honestly just haven't been needing to clean her up, but the rest uh, is going to be available, except maybe one or two I'll keep from my own collection. But most of these are going to be up on the Etsy shop. Uh, super excited, thought I would show you the process of me actually getting them ready for the shop. So without further ado, let's get into it. Let me know in the comments if you have any Kittles in your own collection or if you remember them from your childhood or if this is the first time you're ever hearing about them. So without further ado, let's get into it. All right, and here's everything we will be using in today's video. A rag, some dish soap, a comb, cotton swabs, soft and scrub, and a little cup of water. All right, so I've gone ahead and laid out everything we need. I did put down a just kind of like dingy, just rag, uh, just as a barrier. It will also come in handy when we start to clean. So without further ado, let's get into it. I thought we would start off with some of these little like kittle colas. These were little like soda pop dolls, really, really fun. I think these were made in 1967, maybe? Yep, 1967. So let's go ahead, pop them open. And... Oh, that one's stuck. The nice thing about these is the little base was actually the stand for them. Very smart. So we got all the little dolls. I think the dolls really don't really need too much. I'm just gonna go ahead and wipe down the soda pop bottles. Now I do have like a diluted soft and scrub mixture here that I am gonna probably just go ahead and use on them just so we can do one and done with them. Not really have to worry too much. And then we'll probably let these soak in some water, at least the uh, the bottle parts. This has like a little bit of discoloration, kind of like sticker residue. I might hit this with like some hand sanitizer or something to try to like remove it because it's definitely giving like sticker residue. I don't even know if I'm getting it up to be completely honest. Yeah, maybe it looks like it. Sure. It's not necessarily sticky, so I'm like, might as well just try to approach it and get it off now. bam sticker residue or whatever that was for the most part gone amazing put that over there put that over there i will say the lemon one was probably one of the better shape ones Let's do Greta Grape. I will say they all had really great names. I think the lemon one was Laffy Lemon. The orange was Olivia Orange. Got Luscious Lime and Greta Grape. And there's, I think, a Shirley Temple and... And something else. I forgot whatever it was in more of the... Um, I think it more like traditional, like bottle. Go in with the 
line. And honestly, on the dolls, I'm really just going to give them a little bit of a wipe down using a cotton swab. Uh, you can be a little bit more thorough when it comes to cleaning these, but I will say on some of the other Kittle dolls, you do have to be cautious, especially the ones with the little wiring in their limbs. Uh, those definitely are prone to turning kind of a greenish blue over time if they are affected by, you know, different climate or what have you. So I highly suggest really trying to keep those out of water. But with these little teeny tiny ones, um, they're pretty easy. I'm just really giving their face a overall clean vibe. I'm like, where did this yellow come from? I think it came from the orange. Was there like yellow residue or something? I don't know. Yeah, you never, they always, you know, they always fool you. They might look clean and then you wipe them down a little bit and it's just like, oh. Okay, fix her hair up. I love this one. Probably one of my favorites. Then we got the little lime. I love that she has the little lime on her. I almost dipped it in the bleach. Let's not do that. And just styling their hair with a little bit of water, I'd say is the best, best way to go. And again, I probably want to submerge these completely in water, um, unless their like outfit is completely filthy. Just you don't want some of that like felt detailing and what have you that sometimes are on them to uh, disintegrate. sweet. Cute. All right, so let's go ahead, put these aside since they have all been cleaned. Now, I did want to give a little bit of a demonstration on like what the greening actually looks like. So this is one that does have a lot of greening unfortunately. I do suggest isolate, oh, I can't talk. I do suggest isolating uh, these, especially away from the other Kittles, just so they don't turn green. Um, it is really unfortunate. I love that, you know, this one still poses and what have you, but yeah, they're just not as valuable, honestly. I am gonna honestly take her outfit, I'm not gonna lie. Her outfit's in better shape than the one I have in my own collection, so we're just gonna snag that from you. Thank you, Miss Lola. But yeah, we can see 1965 gnarly greening. It's funny, I have been attempting to actually fix green ear, but this doll has been soaking in CLR for, oh gosh, probably like three weeks. And honestly, I'm probably just gonna give it a rest because it's not improving at all. Um, but there is like, I have not found a way to get off the greening, unfortunately. So unless you know in the comments, definitely let me know if you know how to get rid of the greening, but they're kind of just a lost cause, good for crafting or, or other things. Honestly, if they were completely blue, they'd be kind of a really cool, like Martian looking thing. But yeah, not even really gonna attempt to clean her just because, again, she is a little bit of a lost cause, unfortunately. I hate saying that. But again, we are really just going to really just wipe off their faces a little bit and partially style their hair with a little bit of water. Kind of how I'm doing right now. Let me look for my comb. Okay, but yeah, just very gently 
comb out their hair a little bit, use a little bit of water to tame it, but really never submerge these dolls in water. I cannot stress that enough. If their clothing needs a little bit of a tweak, uh, take it off, hand wash it, but never just throw these dolls in water because it will definitely, definitely not be a good, good scenario. So really just a little bit of water, comb that out, let it sit, and you are solid. Well, bam Oops. I do like to have good hair on the dolls. Again, do have passed in cosmetology, so I always like dolls to have really, really, really nice hair. I will say that's one thing with me as a collector. If a doll doesn't really have good hair and I don't really plan on rerouting it, I don't really pick it up for my own collection. All right, again, just a little wipe down. And very lightly on the body, just to clean it up a little bit. Again, really just being cautious not to get these too wet. And I do suggest when you are cleaning them, if you do use any water at all, just like wiping it away afterwards, just to side on the side of caution, always probably the best. And I'm just gonna tame her ponytail a little bit. to the next. This one is so cute. This one originally came in like a little crib. His hair does need to be <laughs> readjusted. This one's definitely a keeper. And these you don't have to be as cautious with. You could honestly submerge these in water if you wanted the little skiddles. Um, but uh, she doesn't really need it. These dolls didn't have the wire going through them, so they don't really ever get the greening, which is nice. Awesome. Just tame her hair a little bit. Love how her hair still has its original accessory. Super cute. Just wetting it down again. Letting the natural shape of the curl fall into place. And helps tame any flyaways that you might have. Perfect.
Now it does look like this one does have a little bit of discoloration on her chin. So strange. Love this one's eyebrows. Ended up finding two of these in this lot. This one will be the one up for sale. She's a little bit better shape. And she has some great curls going on. I'll just fix this one's hair a little bit. There we go. And there we go. But yeah, this one is probably the kittle I'm most excited about, I will say. She's a keeper. Uh, I did end up <laughs> deciding uh, that I would buy this lot honestly just to buy her and then I was like yeah there was one or two other kittles I saw from my own collection that I kind of wanted um besides her and then the rest of them I was like well I can just put those in the Etsy so that's kind of how we're doing it today so again not letting her get too too wet the thing is about these dolls is they are made of rubber and so their bodies can get a little bit on the sticky side sometimes so a lot of times dirt and debris <laughs> likes to cling on, unfortunately. This one did have just the smallest little like imperfection on his face. So I did use a little bit of soft and scrub that right up again really trying to wipe them down immediately um, just so no moisture lingers And I will say, you don't ever want to like brush Kittle's hair too, too harsh with any vintage fiber. Um, you want to be as gentle as you can with it. Because after time, I don't know if you've ever seen it on like vintage Barbies or other Kittles, but like their bangs and like hair can really, really get fried over time if it's not handled correctly. Which again, these were playthings for kids. So like it happens, but definitely when it comes to cleaning them, you want to, again, be, be cautious, be careful. We are just getting this one bobbed out as we speak. Try to get her bangs down a little bit. And like I said, this is the Lola I uh, have in my own collection that this one, I am stealing its outfit. <laughs> this one, uh, the one I've had in my own collection, I've had her for quite some time, but she has some slight discoloration on her pants. And honestly, I could 
very easily just put them with some OxyClean, but eh, why not just give her a new outfit entirely? She does need a little bit of a wipe down anyways. Again, can't stress this enough. Don't submerge these dolls in water. And even like where the little wire comes out around the hands, especially don't get that wet since that is where the exposed wire a lot of the times pops out as well as around the feet. Looking good, looking good. Getting ready for their forever homes. Except one or two that's living with me. Yay. And I'm gonna get started on the case. All right, and this is probably gonna be the easiest of the day. We are really just gonna go ahead, mix a little soft and scrub, mix a little water, and just go ham on it. The nice thing about these old vinyl cases is they really do clean up really well, even if they look disintegrated and disgusting. Not necessarily, I guess, disintegrated. If it's like ripping, there's really not much you can do. But if it looks really grody and in need of a cleaning, good chances, just a little bit of soft and scrub and water and you'll be good. So, really nice. I am a huge fan of these vinyl cases. I like to carry them, again, around as like purses a lot of the time. And Q-tips do even come in handy in this. Really great for the nooks and crannies on these. Cute, cute, cute. All right, we have officially commenced on the Kittle cleaning. So we are all done nice and clean. Here we have little Sleeping Beauty. We got some clones back there. We got a Storykin. We have some of the Storybook Kittles. Some of the other original 24, another clone. And then of course we have the Kittle Colas, which I am really thrilled about. And then we had a little spare doll, a random Dolly Darling, of course. And then duplicate. And those two I'm gonna end up keeping. But yeah, everything cleaned up really nice. Even the case cleaned up super nice. So if you are viewing this, everything that is going to Etsy will be on Etsy. So go give that a check out and definitely let me know. Uh, are you a Kittle collector? Have you ever seen these before? Did you have them in your childhood? I would definitely love to know. These are some of my favorite little teeny tiny ones to collect. Very expressive, bright, cheerful, and of course, right around the mod era. So some really funky fun style. Oh, just look at the graphics on the case. All right, and I will see everyone in the next video again. Have a great rest of your day. Like and subscribe.